Using a section of our image file to draw our tiles and characters is great, but chances are we also want some animation. We'll briefly look at implementing that now, by adding three more water frames so our water tiles will fade from lighter to darker and back again. It's not an impressive effect, but proves the point. As normal, the PNG file and complete source code, along with a written version of this tutorial, is available on my website. First of all, we're going to modify the sprite property of our water sprite. Instead of just the one entry to specify the positions of the sprite in the image file, we are now specifying the positions of all four frames in order. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and then for frames 5 and 6, we specify bottom left and top right again. We also add the attribute D for each entry, which will be the duration in milliseconds this frame will be displayed. Once completed, the animation will begin again from the first frame. Our animated sprites really need a bit more data stored with them, but we can generate the other information automatically. In the Windows on load function, we'll begin by looping through all of the tile types. We set a flag for each entry called animated that is true if the sprite array contains more than one entry. Next, if the sprite is animated, we create a temporary variable, t, that will store the total time of all sprite frames. We then loop through the sprite array, and for each frame we add the property start, which is the current value of t, i.e. the point at which all previous frames added together have completed, add the duration of this entry to t, and set the end property for this frame as the new value of t. After looping through all frames for the current sprite, we set the current tile type's sprite duration property to the total time of all frames, the value of the t variable. We'll also make a method for finding the frame to draw in a given sprite. It will take the sprite array of the object being drawn, the total duration of the sprite, the current game time in milliseconds, and the animated flag for the object being drawn. First, we'll test if the sprite animated flag is true. If not, we just return the first entry of the sprite array, index 0. Next, we modify the time passed to the method to fit somewhere on the sprite's timeline. We set it to be the modulus, or remainder, of the past time value divided by the total duration of the sprite. We can then loop through all of the frames on the sprite. If the end property of a tested frame is later than the modified time value, we'll return that frame. This is all we need for this function. Finally, we'll modify our nested loops for drawing the map tiles. We'll assign a temporary variable called sprite the current frame for the currently drawn tile using the getFrame method we just created to find this, and then draw that section of the image to the canvas. Whilst we've just provided support for animating our map tiles, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how animated sprites and tilesheet work. We'll come back to this subject in more detail at a later date.